Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. I hope you're well. In today's episode, we will explore the rock hidden city. This city lies in a small desert valley completely surrounded by towering sandstone cliffs. The spectacular archaeological ruins in the Middle East. Brothers and sisters, we are talking about none other than the famous lost city, Petra. Petra is in Jordan, represents an ancient lost city. The lost city of Petra is a majestic place, thousands of years old, that still holds hidden secrets waiting to be unveiled. Originally known to its inhabitants as Rokmu, is a historical and archaeological city in southern Jordan. Petra lies on the slope of Jabal al Madba, is a basin among the mountains which form the eastern flank of the Arba Valley that runs from the Dead Sea to the Gulf of Aqaba. Petra is believed to have been settled as early as 9000 BC and it was possibly established in the 4th century BC as the capital city of Nabatine Kingdom. The Nabataeans were nomadic Arabs who invested in Petra's proximity to the trade routes by establishing it as a major regional trading hub. The city has managed to wow the world with its elaborate stone-cut architecture as well as the water conduit system. They were particularly skillful in harvesting rainwater, agriculture and stone carving. The city is called Rose City for the rose-red colored sandstone hills. The red-tinged mountains surrounding Petra on its three sides make it look like a fortress. Petra for almost five centuries was hidden to the outside world until its rediscovery by a Swiss explorer named Johann Ludwig Burkhardt in 1812. It is therefore called the Lost City. He had spent many years studying Arabic and the history of Islam. Archaeological excavations in the area have shown that the area was first occupied more than 9,000 years ago. Petra shelters around 800 carved tombs. Petra is one of the evidence to mankind that Middle East was, after all, the most influential region of the world in the Middle Ages. Petra is a hidden gem that will take you through the history of Middle East like no other place. It easily rivaled Jerusalem as a caretaker city of the Middle East history. In 1985, the Petra Archaeological Park was declared the UNESCO World Heritage Site and in 2007, it was named one of the new seven wonders of the world. The people of the Nabataean Empire were fantastic engineers. They had made their own water waves very thoughtfully, which is why they never had floods no matter how much it rained. And although the water would drain into these large reservoirs that they built and that is the reason why the Romans wanted to acquire this city. Scientists say more clues remain beneath the surface. We have uncovered just 15% of the city. The vast majority, 85% is still underground and untouched. Allahu Akbar. Hamud were known for hewing houses in mountains. Petra are ruins of their civilization. 1400 years ago, this was mentioned in the Holy Quran. The Prophet Saleh was sent to Thamud. The Holy Quran says, In the Quran, the Thamud rejected the messengers. When their brother Saleh said to them, Will you not be righteous? I am sent to you as a trusty messenger. And to Thamud, we sent their brother Saleh. He said, O oh my people, worship Allah. You have no other deity but him. Indeed, there has come to you a clear evidence from your Lord. This she camel of Allah, a sign for you. So leave her that she may feed in Allah's earth and do her no harm, lest a painful punishment seize you. And remember the time when he made you inheritors of his favors after Ad and assigned you an abode in the land. You built palaces in its plains, and you hewed the mountains in the houses. Remember, therefore, the favors of Allah and commit inequity in the earth. Causing disorder, the chief men of his people who were arrogant said to those who were reckoned weak, those among them who believed. Do you know for certain that Saleh is one sent by his Lord? They answered, Surely we believe in that with which he has been sent. Those who were arrogant said, Indeed, we disbelieve in that in which you believe. Allah has saved these ruins for us so that we can draw lessons from them. 
there is a tendency for humans to get involved with the apparent and present and ignore hidden and distant. So by saying these runes, Allah has intended a profound lesson for us by demonstrating the temporary nature of purely worldly pursuits. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, Have they not traveled through the earth and observed how was the end of those before them? They were greater than them in power, and they plowed the earth and built it up more than they have built it up. And their messengers came to them with clear evidences, and Allah would not ever have wronged them, but they were wronging themselves. In 2016, archaeologists discovered a large, previously unknown monumental structure buried beneath the sands of Petra using satellite imagery. For two centuries, tourists and archaeologists alike had no idea what was hidden right underneath their feet in the sands of Petra. It's twice as large as an Olympic-sized swimming pool and almost as long, yet for thousands of years this massive ancient monument remained hidden in plain sight at a popular tourist spot. Nabatine inscriptions in Sinai and other places display widespread references to the names including Allah. According to Arab tradition, Petra is the spot where Musa al -Islam, Moses struck a rock with his staff and water came forth, and where Musa al -Islam's brother Harun is buried, at Mount Hor, known today as Jabal Harun. The Wadi Musa or Wadi of Moses is the Arab name for the narrow valley at the head of which Petra is sited, a mountain top shireen of Moses. Sister Miriam was still shown to pilgrims at the time of Jerome in the 4th century, but its location has not been identified since. There are many secrets of Petra yet to be revealed. So how the people of Petra or Thamud destroyed and why? Thamud, the people of Prophet Saleh worshipped other than Allah and caused destruction on earth. They requested from him to show them any sign or miracle that indicates he is a messenger of Allah. They specifically asked him to let a she camel with specific features and color emerge from a mountain. And he asked them if they will believe in his mission when Allah makes possible the miracle they requested to see and they said, yes, we will believe. Prophet Saleh al-Islam then rose up and went to his prayer niche and prayed to Allah, asking him let that miracle happen. Allah actually answered him instantly by letting the mountain split into two and a huge she camel with their specification came out. Having been fascinated by this amazing miracle, some of them believed and embraced Islam and joined his mission. But most of them rebelled against him, that is why Allah says in Quran. And we gave Thamud the she camel as a visible sign, but they wronged her and we sent not the signs except as a warning. That camel was referred to as the camel of Allah, Naqatullah, as a sign of honor and nobility to her. The Prophet Saleh, by Allah's command, split water consumption between them and the camel. She would drink a day and they would also drink the next day. And they would milk or draw her milk the day she would drink to substitute for the water they would lose her routine. Their hatred of Saleh turned towards the blessed she camel and became centered on it. Saleh feared that they might kill the camel so he warned them, Oh my people, this she camel of Allah is a sign for you. Leave her to feed on Allah's earth and touch her not with evil, lest a near torment will seize you. For a while, Saleh's people let the camel graze and drink freely but in their hearts, they hated it. However, the miraculous appearance of the unique camel caused many to become Saleh's followers and they clung to their belief in Allah. 
The disbelievers now began complaining that this huge she camel with its unusual qualities drank most of the water and frightened their cattle. They laid a plot to kill camel and sought the help of their woman folk to tempt the man to carry out their commands. They watched the camel closely, observing all its movements. As the she camel came to drink at the well, one of the men shot it in the leg with an arrow. Camel tried to escape but was hampered by the arrow. Then another one followed the camel and struck it with a sword in the other leg. As it fell to the ground, as camel fell to the ground, he pierced it with his sword. The killers were given a hero's welcome, cheered with songs and poetry composed in their praise. In their arrogance, they mocked Saleh, enjoy life for three days, then the punishment will descend upon you. Saleh was hoping that they would see the folly of their ways and change their attitude before the three days went out. Why three days? They asked. Let the punishment come as quickly as possible. They also plotted to kill Saleh Islam and his household as Almighty Allah stated. So they planned a plan and we planned a plan while they perceived not. Allah saved Saleh Islam and his followers from their wicked plans. They left the evil doors and moved to another place. Three days after Saleh al-Islam's warning, thunderbolts fell in the air, followed by several earthquakes which destroyed the entire tribe and its homeland. Some of the scholars also say sound waves destroyed them. The land was violently shaken, destroying all living creatures in it. There was one terrific cry which had hardly ended with the disbelievers of Saleh's people were struck dead, one and all at the same time. Neither their strong buildings nor their rock-hewn homes could protect them. All were destroyed before they realized what was happening. As for the people who believed in the message of Saleh al-Islam, they were saved because they had left the place. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the straight path. So that's it for today guys. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and share this video to your friends and family. Barakallahu feekum. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum.